God to invite uh, the master to come and be with us. Father Stalin, look at this. Collective bark found farming is just bliss. No cows left, no pigs at all. Just your picture on the wall. That was a Ukrainian children's song from the 1930s. In 1933, there was a smell of death in Ukraine. While children sang about famine, corpses lit the streets, and cannibalism was rife. The Soviet Union denied that there, were, that there was any salvation, and Ukrainians were told to sew up their mouths. The mere utterance of the word famine would result in a three to five year prison sentence. Nevertheless, international governing bodies knew about the famine. But whether due to misreported information or a decision not to aggravate potential allies, the rest of the world stayed silent whilst millions starved to death. To better understand the global response, the famine itself was first be examined. From 1932 to 33, there was starvation throughout the Soviet Union. Peasants living in the Volga, Don and Kuwait regions all suffered famine. The worst affected states were Kazakhstan, which suffered approximately 1.45 million mortalities, and Ukraine, with mixed and casualties ranging from 3.9 million to 10 million. Furthermore, although workers were not as badly affected by the famine as peasants, Ukraine's intellectual elite were killed or imprisoned from 1929 onwards. <coughs> under the pretext that they belong to the made-up union for the liberation of Ukraine. The government of the USSR to disarm the leaders of the Ukrainian nationalist forces and prevent a pro-independence uprising in Ukraine. For the purpose of the speech, I will mainly focus on the international response to the famine endured by the Ukrainian peasants, the largest of all national and social groups affected by Stalin's tyranny. The Ukrainian people had always been troublesome to Soviet leaders. Centuries of regional rule by Cossacks had led to a thoroughly entrenched system of individual small-scale farmers. This was in sharp contrast to the Russian traditions of collective ownership of land. Consequently, in 1929, the second year of Stalin's first five-year plan, Russian peasants adjusted better than their Ukrainian counterparts to the reintroduction of collective farming. In 1930, Almost half of all peasant uprisings in response to secularization took place in Ukraine. A combination of poor organization and peasant resistance led to collective bombing in Ukraine being a failure. Furthermore, Ukraine's grain requisition quotas were much harsher than those of the other SSRs. In 1931, the cereal state collection from Ukraine comprised 45 to 46 percent of the entire harvest. These quotas were unfulfilled and resulted in peasants killing and eating livestock, prompting a further escalation of depressions. In August 1932, the death of any amount of grain or animal products became punishable by death or exile. When local officials protested that the excessive grain requisitioning had led to mass hunger and starvation, Stalin responded coldly, those who do not work deserve to starve. Not only did Stalin ignore these pleas, but he also introduced laws that would deteriorate famine further. In 1933, a report by the Novo Russisk Italian Royal Council, Count Consul, described how, in Ukraine, peasants were unable to leave their farms due to a ban on the purchase of rail tickets, as well as due to the encirclement of villages by the ODPU. The report further depicted how it was commonplace for the authorities to seize food that peasants were trying to bring onto the market, or even personally consume. The famine of 1932-33 is now widely known as the Holodom, a combination of two Ukrainian words, Holodom, meaning hunger, and Mor, meaning plague. According to a team of Ukrainian demographers, the Holodom resulted in 3.9 million deaths in Ukraine. Although the sum was often disputed to figures such as 7 million, estimated size 10 million have been made if long-term demographic losses are taken into account. As the Holodom progressed, it began to crush all humanity in its wake. In March 1933, nine cases of people killing and eating family members were reported by the OGPU in the Fabulous region alone. 
58 cases were reported in April, 132 in May and 221 in June. The alternative to cannibalism is to survive from horse manure, tree bark and household pets. The average life expectancy of a male born in Ukraine in 1933 was five years. Eight for a girl. In the spring of 1933, Stalin began to recognise that there were not enough peasants left in Ukraine to provide sufficient grain for the workers. And masses of Russian peasants were moved into Ukraine. During the first wave of migration in autumn 1933, 117,000 Russian peasants arrived in Ukraine. Over the course of the following eight years, the number of migrants increased further as information about more land and free space in Ukraine continued to circulate in the USSR. Furthermore, grain requisitioning laws became gradually relaxed, even the battle. The replacement of Ukrainians with Russians was done not only at peasant level, but also at the elite level. Ukrainian party officials were directly replaced from Moscow. By January 1934, only one third of the Ukrainian Communist Party Politburo could speak Ukrainian. By the end of the famine, Stalin's plan had been accomplished. He had purged the elite and diluted the Ukrainian peasantry. He had decreased the level of threat of the Ukrainian National Revolution to such an extent that it wasn't until the late 1980s that it would regain the same traction that it had before 1930. As the beginnings of fascism lay in its cradle, international priorities they were forming alliances with the USSR. Despite Stalin's best efforts, truthful information regarding the famine was available internationally. However, it was heavily muddied by false accounts to the extent that no major physical power was willing to risk destabilizing diplomatic relations with the USSR in favour of providing aid to a famine that the USSR itself denied. Stalin succeeded in silencing a nation and the rest of the world to his genocide. In May of 1936, the German consulate in Kiev broke. Ukrainian Ukraine has been destroyed. 86 years on from the Holocaust, over 20,000 books have been published about it. 86 years on from the Holocaust, Ukrainian Ukraine, unlike communism, survived. 86 years on from the Holocaust, it is at last receiving the international recognition that it deserved in 1933. Slava Green. Slava.